Water is not only very tasty, it's also very good for you. And that is because 70% of our bodies is comprised of water. A lot of the molecules in our bodies are actually dissolved in the water. Water is the main biological solvent. Water is a very strong solvent. It can dissolve many molecules and ions. Here's another example. This is a glass of beer. The molecules that give beer its flavor are fully dissolved in the water. Now, water is such a good solvent that we also use it a lot in the chemistry laboratory. Solutions that have water as the medium are called aqueous solutions. In these solutions, the medium water is called the solvent, and the molecules that are dissolved in the water are called solutes. Now, why is water such a good solvent? In order to understand that, we have to look at the structure of the water molecule itself. Water is composed of oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms. The oxygen and the hydrogen are covalently linked, and that means they share electrons. These are called the binding electrons. However, the binding electrons are not shared equally among the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms. As it turns out, the binding electrons spend a little bit more time on the oxygen atom compared to the hydrogen atom. And that means that, on average, the oxygen atom will be a little bit more negatively charged than the hydrogen atoms. We call this phenomenon a polar bond. Water has a polar bond. And the water molecule as a whole has a high degree of polarity. Now, this polarity is the reason why the water molecule is such a good solvent. Let's try to understand why water dissolves ionic compounds so well. Ionic compounds, like for instance sodium chloride, dissolve very well in water. When brought into contact with water, it generates cations and anions. Why does it happen? Well, let's look at the structure of these compounds a little bit more carefully. When it's not dissolved yet, sodium chloride is a solid. It's a solid compound. It consists of a lattice composed of sodium cations and chlorine anions. When we bring this lattice into contact with water, the water molecules will start to interact with the individual ions. And this is because water has a negative side and a positive side. The negative end of the water molecule likes to interact with the positive charges of the sodium cation. The positive side of the water molecule likes to interact with the negative charges of the chlorine anions. These interactions are so strong that water molecules can completely encapsulate these ions, plucking them away from the lattice and drifting away, thus fully dissolving the individual ions. The lattice will be dissolved. Now note here in this image that the plus end of the water molecules interacts with the chlorine very vigorously, and the negative end, the oxygen end, is oriented towards the sodium cations. So, water can both dissolve cations and anions efficiently. These interactions are strong. They are stronger than the interactions that keep the positively charged ions and the negatively charged ions together in the lattice. Consequently, the lattice dissolves. How does water dissolve non-ionic compounds? Well, if you look at non-ionic compounds, we have to make a distinction between polar and non-polar compounds. Polar compounds are those molecules that have polar bonds. If they have strong polar bonds, they will dissolve well in water. Ethanol is an example. The ethanol molecule is given right here. We can see it has CH bonds, which are non-polar. That means no plus end or negative end. However, it also has an OH bond, which we know is very polar. So, when we bring this molecule into contact with water, we will see that the water molecules like to interact very strongly with the OH part of the ethanol molecule. The water molecules will not interact strongly with the CH part of the molecule. However, the interactions of the OH part with the water molecules is strong enough to fully dissolve the ethanol molecule in water. We know that ethanol can dissolve well in water because ethanol is a component in wine. And wine is a nice homogeneous solution. 
What about molecules that have no polar bonds? For instance, decane. Decane only has CH bonds, which we just concluded are not polar. Consequently, there will be no strong interactions with water. And when we try to dissolve decane in water, it will not work. There is no strong interaction, no strong dissolving forces. The decane will stay with the decane molecules, the water molecules will stay with the water molecules. And if we add decane, like oil, to water, we get a phase separation. The oil will be on top and the water will be at the bottom. They will not mix. Let's take the rules of what we've learned so far and apply it to this molecule, maltitol. If we bring maltitol into contact with water, Will it be a non-ionic or an ionic solute? And will it dissolve well in water? Maltitol, by the way, is a sweetener and can be found in some candy. Maltitol has covalent bonds. It does not have ionic bonds. And that means that it will not form cations and anions when dissolved in water. Now, of these covalent bonds, we recognize the OH bond. The OH bond is very polar and thus will interact strongly with water. Maltitol, therefore, dissolves very well in water. The way to write this chemically is, maltitol, which is a solid, brought into contact with water, will be fully dissolved, will be in the aqueous phase. So in summary, we've learned the following. We've learned that the polarity of the water molecule is the reason why water is such a strong solvent. We've seen that the polarity of the water molecule allows water to interact strongly with cations and anions, and thus dissolving salts very well. We've seen that non-ionic solvents can also dissolve in water if they have a polar bond so that they can interact strongly with the water molecules. If the molecule has no strong polar bonds, it will not interact strongly with water, and consequently, it will not dissolve in water.